Good evening, everyone. It's Sunday evening at 10.45 p.m. Eastern Time. I'm going live at this weird hour. Usually it's Sunday mornings at 9.30, but there was a glitch to my morning live stream, so I'm doing it again. I apologize to everyone who had tuned in. Um, the topic today is cleaning makeup brushes and the Korean drama involving zombies called All of Us Are Dead. My friend recommended All of Us Are Dead to me because she's really into horror, thriller, very scary. I'm not into those things, so it took me a while to start it. But once I started, I dove right in, and it's so addictive. So, uh, oh, right now I'm drinking coffee. This morning I was drinking a matcha green tea latte, but I just feel like I need to keep going tonight. So I made myself an espresso. Um, mm, so good. So first, the drama. Um, there's a total of 12 episodes and it goes by really fast. Initially, you do get a lot of the traditional zombie movies, zombie show elements, like the kind of heart pounding, jumping out of nowhere, the kind of thrill of the chase of the zombies, and also the fascinating kind of process of how people get infected and they turn. So that's all there. And what I like about this drama is, is that there's more to it than that. The characters, even though they are high school students, I had my doubts on whether or not I would be able to relate to them. But I find the development of each of the characters is really fascinating. And as I progress through the episodes, I learn a little bit more about them. And that's what keeps me hooked. And more so than the actual, you know, the graphics of the zombies and the scare. It can get really gory. So that is a warning. But you know when it's coming. So I kind of just turn away or just wait until that moment passes. But I look, find myself looking forward to watching more episodes. Tonight will be the last episode. So that explains the copy. I do want to stay up and finish the series. I did it in batches. So I watched about three episodes because you can't just watch one. My husband and I were watching it together. He really loves zombie. So he's been a really kind of picky critic. But he said that this one is really great in terms of entertainment and the intelligent way that the story progresses. I wondered, how can you create a series on a zombie story? A movie, yes, maybe two hours, but each episode is about an hour, maybe a little over, and times 12. So they manage to do it and still keep you interested. I heard that there is a season two, and I'm so excited about that. I will be looking out for it. I actually may do episode by episode when season two comes out, even though I hate waiting. But if you're not into zombies, um, I still would recommend that you give it a try because um, I've watched Kingdom, I watched Train to Busan, and I haven't seen Happiness yet. But out of the ones that I have seen, All of Us Are Dead is up there. Um, so give it a try uh, if you're finding that you're in the mood for something where you just need to turn the mind off. And uh, it's, it's not high energy. It's not high emotional investment. It's just really light. And it's a good way to ease into the weekend. So, um, you know, that's my take on the drama. I think that um, I read a couple of episodes when the director was telling the audience on how to watch it. And he recommended not just take it for visual, but also pay attention to the audio. And I've been doing that ever since I read the article. And it does heighten the perception of the drama and my impression of it because so much goes into the fine details. There was a lot of choreography and effort spent into the way that the zombies move and how they interact with each other as well as the uninfected. So I think that. Um, it does a really good balancing of the political aspect and world issues. And then just keeping it straight, like entertainment value. So it's not completely ridiculous. There is a certain meaning and logic as you're watching the dialogue. 
and listening to how the characters are making decisions and especially during a crisis scenarios. So you're not feeling drained because it's not always like high crisis. There are lull moments and that's when you learn more about the characters. So I hope that this has piqued your interest and you at least give it a try. Episode one was good. I started getting hooked up to episode two and now it's, it's just been something that I look forward to to start off the weekend. So aside from that, well, let me know in the chat if there are any other, because after this is over, we're actually sad and we're Google searching best Korean zombie drama or movie. So happiness is one of them. I heard that that one is really scary. So I will kind of explore that one. Um, and there were a couple of other ones. There was one with Park shin I don't know if that is a zombie storyline or if it's just an infectious disease. I tried, what was it, the Silent Blue Sea or um, expectations were really high for that one because it starred Peduna and Kong Yu, but I just could not keep up. Um, I found that my mind was wandering. Maybe I'll restart it again, but if you have any good recommendations, let me know in the comments below. Okay, now when it comes to makeup brushes, this is something that I was thinking about because I did go away on a short trip this weekend. Actually, this, this week um, I was away um, at a cottage and then I went and I took a, a bit of a vacation an hour or two away from my home. So just locally, and I was carrying around my brushes and thinking about, okay, I have all this time, I'm off, like I should be cleaning these a little bit more diligently, but sometimes when you're on, and these are the ones that I actually um, use at home, but when I'm traveling, I really limit it to three. So I took these two and I took a foundation brush. So even these three, I wanted to keep them clean. So I have three methods that I wanted to talk about. The first is the washing machine method. And that's not something that I can use while I'm traveling, but when I look on other YouTube videos, I see that it really does work. Like they put their brushes into a pillowcase or, or like a shoe pouch like this. So they just like put them inside and then they tie it up here really tight. And then they kind of just knot it to make sure that the brushes don't come out. And then putting it into the cycle, I haven't tried this, but I would imagine it's a delicate cycle with warm water so that you can get all the makeup and the oils out uh, using regular laundry detergent and then you spin. So when the brushes come out of the washer, they look like new. Um, you know, the areas where you can kind of see makeup, it's turned back to its original state. But I don't like this method. Um, I personally wouldn't try it on my brushes because I invest in high quality brushes. I like to keep them for a very long time. A lot of people are into switching out brushes and buying them new and replenishing them. But I'm not a makeup artist, so um, I don't use them on multiple people. I also don't wear makeup on a daily basis. So the ones that I have, I really want to enjoy the experience and also keep them around for a long time. So I'm also a little bit wary about the damage that it would cause to the washing machine. I just feel like I know it's meant to withstand, even zippers go in there and those can clang on the sides, but sometimes brushes, I'm not too sure. Um, I also think about the glue that holds the bristles together. And I wonder whether or not in the washing machine that would really harm and damage like the structural integrity of the brush and maybe some of the hairs would fall out over time. So for a number of reasons, just thinking about my brushes and putting them through that torturous cycle and also for my washing machine's sake, I would not do it. But I know people who are a fan of it because it's easy and it's effective. Um, but I'm going to show you more traditional methods, which are also easy as well. But it maintains the health and the form and, and shape of your brush. So I find that foundation is generally the hardest to remove. Um, so I would use the more traditional like wash method, but the first one is a brush cleaner. Um, this one, I really look at ingredients. It's made in Korea. 
So you can buy this at Sephora, it's a Sephora brand. Um, but when I took a look at the ingredients, the first one is a solvent. And the second one is like an antimicrobial, sort of like, uh, it is a chemical, but it's also a preservative. And both of those were rated as clean or green <laughs> under EWG standards. And then it also contains natural essential oils like tea tree, lemon, grapefruit, you know, citrus oil like orange and lime. So given that those ingredients are ones that I'm comfortable with, I'm okay with just taking like um, a baby wipe, nothing too fancy, or you can use a makeup wipe. And then I do this every time I use the brush. So after I use it, because when you do it before, some of the solution and um, some of the ingredients from the makeup wipe, because it, it dampens the brush, then it can really taper or it would mess up the actual ingredients of the skincare or the makeup product. So I would do this after and I would spray onto the cloth, not on the brush, and then just swirl it around. Well, a lot of the, already you can see, I'm not even using a lot of force. I'm just kind of like brushing it side to side. And you can see that there is foundation that's coming off. I used this to apply my makeup this morning and then I cleaned it during my live feed. So then I reapplied the normal amount of foundation that I would. So this is only after one use. And then in order to for me to get in between, because you'll find that when you fan out your brush, there's a lot of foundation that gets caught in between. So not just the um, surface area and the tip, but you actually will see a lot of makeup that's lodged in. So I'm pretty thorough when I do this um, after each time I use it. And then, you know, there's a good amount of makeup that ends up on the white. So then I wonder, like, what if I do a more traditional method? And so I like doing that. I'm just going to, while I have this, I'm going to just clean the eyebrow brush. Look how dirty. That's pretty dirty. And this is, again, after one use. So I like to do this. And then I lay out my brushes in the sun. And they naturally get disinfected and they dry a lot faster. Um, a lot of people, they keep their brushes like inside a pouch. That's great for traveling, but when I'm home, I like to kind of air them out to make sure that they're not kind of getting moldy or, you know, when they're kept in dark places, it can start to smell as well if, if they're not cleaned properly. But this is a nice smell. The makeup, the, the wipes are actually baby wipes because so they smell like soothing oatmeal. So I'm going to show you the more traditional method. I would use running water, but for the purposes of the live feed, I put water in a bowl. And um, the first thing that I want to say is I treat my brushes the same way as my face. So when I take a look at what I do to my face, it's the double cleanse method. So I love this balm. It's, it's my favorite. It's from a cream brand called Hymish. I'll leave the description in, I, I'll leave the link to purchase in the description below. It's very inexpensive. So for um, a tub this size, it's 120 milliliters. You pop open the top. There's a protective cover. So saying sorry, uh, for a tub this size, which is 120 milliliters, it's $20 Canadian. And a little goes a long way. So for um, my spatula that I use because I don't want to dip my fingers in. You can see there's like a big area where I scooped. I took this with me when I was traveling. I just put it into a smaller container. So I use a really small amount like this. And maybe even this is too much, but I'm going to try to clean all of my brushes right now. Um, and then I melt it onto my hands first. So when you melt it, it becomes like this milky, oily texture. And then I take the brush, so I put the oil onto the tip first, and then I just slide it 
using my fingers to give a bit of like texture. It's kind of like you're getting in between the, the bristles. The reason why I do this is because the hairs of my brushes, they're natural hairs. So I like them to keep their luster and their moisture and their shine because when they're moisturized, when the brushes are moisturized, then it doesn't create as much uh, abrasion on my skin. And it's more of a pleasant experience on how to apply makeup. So then I kind of just do this and then I wipe off the cleansing balm on the makeup wipe or the baby wipe. And still, even after doing this, the spray, there's still foundation that's left on the brush. So this traditional method is a lot more thorough in making sure that the brush is clean. I'm pretty meticulous because I believe that if your brushes are dirty, you're going to have acne on your face over time. So especially like certain products like this, which is a cushion, like um, the puffer I use, I used to not be very diligent because you get lazy and this is something you carry around in your purse. So it's just quick and convenient, but I was using this sometimes more often than this, but I wasn't cleaning it as much. So now I've become a lot more diligent in that I keep it clean. Cause see, I haven't cleaned this today at all. And I used it once and there's, there's makeup that transfers on because this puffer is really good at absorbing product and then transferring it onto the face. I also am a little bit, I mean, this is a little too anal retentive, but like I hate seeing product on the edges like that. It just bothers me. And I know some people who are really busy, they may not care, but when I have leisure time, like I did this week, I really started noticing things like this. And so I went on a mission just to really clean my brushes and I wanted to share that with you to motivate you to keep them keep yours clean as well. So aside from the the balm, then I use a cleansing foam. And it really doesn't matter which one that I use, but this one I find picks up things because it's 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 sticky, so it really picks up all the dirt and grime. So normally under running water, I would take a good amount of foam, like this amount for one brush, I think for demonstration purposes. And then I would lather it under running water. I'm doing my best <laughs> given that I have this little bowl. And then I would do this kind of vigorously scrubbing to make sure that, and then it really is lathering up. This is very satisfying uh, visually because you can actually see all the foundation coming off on your hands, but it's also refreshing for the brush too. I try to avoid like this part here because, because that's where all the binding is. So the glue or if they sometimes use any other materials to keep the bristles together, it could really ruin the shape of the brush. And then I don't want the areas to rust either. So I just kind of keep it to the sides that I use on my face with that actually touch the product because you're actually not digging into the brush. And that's also recommended by a lot of makeup artists too. It's like you don't dunk the whole brush in water. You just kind of wash off the areas that have more makeup. So the water's getting murky. It's a combination of the foam but it's also the foundation that's coming off and it's coming off a lot easier because we did the double cleanse and I keep squeezing it out and there is still dirty water that's coming out but I would normally do this under running water so then I'm going to use a clean wipe but normally I would use a towel and also dry that towel in the sun. There we go. It looks a lot fresher. And to me, I feel a lot better putting a clean brush on my face the next morning. So for the 
double cleanse of the brushes. I would typically do this once a week. So I would designate a day. Sunday evenings are a good day um, because you just kind of want to do something that's pretty zen. And this can be zen, <laughs> I promise you. And then you have fresh brushes for the Monday. And then you can kind of do a little bit more of like a hack, the, the, the simplified method on a daily basis until you reach Sunday again. So that feels really clean. There's no oily residue, no foundation that's caked on. And it makes me feel better knowing that I didn't have to kind of use the washing machine and risk ruining the brushes. So I hope this was great motivation for you to give this a try. And let me know if you have any other hacks on how to keep your brushes clean. Uh, for me, the foundation ones were the hardest. I don't really wear color makeup, so I didn't demonstrate on my eyeshadow brushes, but I know that a lot of glitter and colorful powders can get caked onto those too. So just be aware when you're applying makeup, just to make sure that you're doing it in a sanitary way, and then it can also help you retain the glow on your skin. Thanks for tuning in. See you next Sunday, and stay happy and healthy. Take care.